Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Hillary, the head of people and culture, and I work with Osmosis. I just wanted to say before we get started, thank you to everybody for doing your part to flatten the curve and raise the line. And a special thanks to all of our frontline healthcare workers who are serving us every day. And hopefully these wellness resources have been useful to you. Uh, we'll continue to offer them as long as we need to. If you're ready for yoga this morning, please go ahead and grab your yoga mat. If you have any props that you would like to use, go ahead and grab maybe a block or a strap. If you don't have a strap and you're tighter in the hamstrings, you might wanna grab um, a towel or a belt or a rope or something else that might be useful for stretching those hamstrings out. We're gonna get into those a little bit today. So thanks again for joining. Happy Saturday. We'll get started. All right. So, um, if you're just joining us, go ahead and grab your yoga mat, grab any props that you might want to use. If you have a strap or a belt or a tie or a towel or anything um, that will help you stretch those hamstrings out, then you might grab that now, okay? I'll give you a minute to grab that if you have it, and then we'll get started on our backs. All right. So... Once you lay down onto your back, we're gonna get moving right away. We're going to open the arms really wide and then walk the feet to the edges of the mat so that the feet are a little bit wider than hips distance apart, okay? And then all we're gonna to start to do is drop the knees over to the right. You're gonna keep your legs staggered, kind of like a pinwheel shape, and then slowly bring those legs back to center and drop them over to the left. So you're just gonna let your knees kind of tick tock side to side. Good, dropping the knees to one side and then back through center. Good. And let's do that a few more times, maybe starting to even integrate your breathing here. Inhale to drop the knees, exhale to bring them back to center. Inhale to drop the knees, exhale, bring them back to center. All right, one more on each side. Knees just swaying, tick tocking side to side. Good, and then we're gonna come back to center and heel toe the feet together. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hug the left knee into the chest here, interlace the fingers around that left shin bone and drop the right leg straight down. So you're just hugging left knee in, right leg is releasing down to the ground. And as you start to hug that leg in, I want you just to pay attention to the space underneath the lower back. So if you're a little bit tighter, you might notice that the lower back starts to press into the mat and the tailbone starts to lift up. What I want you to try to do is release that leg away from you until you feel the lower back lift off the ground a tiny bit. So you wanna maintain that natural S curve in the spine. You wanna keep just a tiny space underneath your lower back. So release the leg far enough away that you can feel the lower back lift and then see if you can keep that as you hug the leg a little bit closer in. And a few tips here are to actively firm that opposite leg to the ground and lift in through the lower belly. All right, let's try to soften the shoulders, relax the jaw. Take an inhale here. And then on the exhale, just release that left leg down and inhale, reach your arms all the way overhead. Exhale, hug the right knee into the chest and give it a squeeze. And again, you might notice that when you pull the leg really close in without thinking too much, you'll notice the lower back press down. So release that right leg away until you find the natural curve of the spine. One of the ways I like to think about yoga practice is that every action in the body has some kind of effect, right? Similar to the idea of karma, right? Every action will have some effect elsewhere in the body. So as you pull the knee into the chest, what else changes here? Does the left thigh bone lift? Does the lower back flatten? And can you just start to stay aware of that, right? So we're gonna release that right leg away until the lower back lifts off the ground and then try to maintain that natural curve in the spine as we pull the right knee nice and close in. Soften your shoulders, relax your jaw, inhale, and stay for your exhale. All right, go ahead and release that right leg down. Inhale, reach your arms all the way overhead, and the next up, hug your left knee into your chest. Okay, this time, we're gonna find a hamstring stretch, so if you don't have a strap nearby, you can interlace your fingers behind the back of your leg and kick your left leg straight into the sky. 
if you do have that strap or that towel, not a bad idea to grab it now and take that strap around the foot. You can take it around the arch of the foot or maybe up closer to the ball mound of the foot. You're just gonna let that um, strap kind of extend your arms longer so that you can reach the foot more easily. All right, we're gonna try to keep that right leg straight on the ground. And then I want you to actively firm that left quadricep. So you're kicking up through that left heel, you're activating the left quadricep. And then maybe at the same time, you're also starting to flex the left foot and pull that pinky toe of the left foot down towards the ground. So it almost feels like you're stamping the sole of your left foot onto the ceiling, nice and flat, and drawing that left pinky toe down. Good. Try to soften your shoulders, maybe even relax your eyes. You can soften the eyelids if you'd like. We'll take a full breath together, inhale. And then on your exhale, go ahead and release the strap, release the left leg down to the ground and then change sides. So again, if you don't have the strap, you can take your hands and interlace them behind the right leg, keep the right leg straight. If you do have a strap or towel, go ahead and take it around that right foot and then kick that right leg to the sky. And again, just gives you a little bit more length here. Should be a little bit easier to straighten the leg if you have the strap or something to extend straight up. All right, flex the foot. See if you can pull that right pinky toe down towards the ground. Again, you wanna mimic kind of stamping the foot onto the ceiling as flat as it would be as you were stamping the foot onto the ground. And then see if you can keep that right leg nice and straight by activating the quadricep muscles and drawing the kneecap almost down towards the hip. Good. And then notice, did the arm bones kind of curl up towards the sky? Did the chest start to lift? See if you can drop the arm bones towards the ground so that the backs of the shoulder blades are in contact with the mat. Soften the chest, relax the jaw, take an inhale. And then on the exhale, go ahead and release the strap and drop the right leg down. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. So we're gonna pull the left knee into the chest and then either take the strap around the foot or again, if you don't have that, take the hands behind the back of the leg. All right, so I know it's early on a Saturday morning, but we're gonna to start to work that lower belly. So what I want you to try to do here is firm both legs so that they're straight. And then the leg that's on the ground, for me, it's the right leg. I have the left leg kicking to the sky, I have the right leg down on the ground. I'm gonna to start to hover that right leg off the mat. Yeah, just a few inches. If that feels like a lot, then you can lift it higher, okay? So you decide kind of how much challenge you do today how much you challenge yourself by lifting the leg higher for a little bit less challenge or dropping it low for a little bit more. Okay, now the real fun begins. What I want you to try to do next is release the hands. So if you have the strap, it might hang there. You can also set it off to the side. If you have the hands behind the back of the leg, I want you to let go. So now you've got the right leg hovering, the left leg kicking to the sky. Now from here, we're gonna take both hands and release them behind the back of the head. You can interlace your fingers if you'd like, so you've got both legs straight in an L shape, and now your hands are behind the back of your head. We're gonna take a really full inhale here, and then on the exhale, curl your head and shoulders up off the ground. Good, try to keep your elbows wide, and try to lean your head back into your hands. Good, so your legs are still straight, you're kicking through your heels, you're pulling your pinky toes back towards you, and then you're lifting your shoulders off the ground. You wanna feel those front ribs pull down, and feel that lower belly scoop in. Take one more breath, inhale. On your exhale, relax your head and shoulders down to the ground, and then go ahead and lift your right leg all the way up to meet your left. Good, from here, drop your left leg to a hover position and pause. Good, and then on your next exhale, curl your head and shoulders up. This time we'll just take a breath here, lifting up, and then relax your head and shoulders back down and float your left leg up. Go drop your right leg down to hover, take an inhale, and then exhale, curl your head and shoulders up off the ground. Relax your head and shoulders down. This time go ahead and interlace your fingers behind the back of that left hamstring. Let the right leg come down to the ground. Full breath in and full breath out. Good, let's bend the left knee back into the chest and release the left leg down. All right, let's take the right leg, hug it in. And then it's up to you whether you interlace the fingers or again, if you have that strap, just a couple of breaths, taking that right leg straight into the sky, flexing the feet, opening up through that hamstring. So there's lots of aspects to yoga, right? We're, we're focusing on the physical 
aspect of yoga, the physical asana here. And as we move through these postures, we want to try as much as we can to practice breath work. So steadying out the breathing and mindfulness, right? We could get into a lot more details, but for today, we'll keep it simple. So as you start to feel the stretch in the back of the leg, notice your breathing here. See if you can smooth it out. And then notice what the mind is focused on. See if you can keep bringing the attention back to the sensation in the body or the breath. When you're ready, you're gonna slowly hover that leg off the ground. So the left leg that was down, lift it up. Notice your breath. Soften through the shoulders, the neck and the jaw. When you're ready, you're gonna release the hands. So see if you can just hover the hands and keep the legs working as they are. You can remove the strap or the towel or whatever you had over the leg. And then we're just gonna take the hands behind the back of the head. So your legs are in this L shape. They're straight, they're strong. The elbows are reaching wide. Inhale here. And then on your exhale, you're gonna curl up and we'll stay for a few breaths. So really working those upper abdominals. Good. So as you kick through the heels, pull your pinky toes back. Lean your head back into your hands so that your gaze is straight up. You can feel the front ribs draw down, feel the back of the rib cage press into the mat, and then lean the head back one more time, stretch your elbows wide. Let's take a full inhale here, and then on your exhale, relax your head and shoulders to the ground. Lift your left leg up to meet your right, and drop your right leg down. Both legs straight and strong. Take a full inhale. Exhale, curl your head and shoulders up, but this time we won't stay too long. Take a breath. Pull those pinky toes back, kick through the inner part of the heel, and then relax the head and shoulders down, lift the right leg up. Go drop the left leg down, both legs straight and strong. Inhale here. Exhale, curl head and shoulders up. Feel the work of the upper abdominals. Stretch your elbows wide, inhale. And exhale, relax your head and shoulders down. Let's take the hands behind the back of that right leg, interlace them. Allow the left leg to come down. And then take one more breath here, just kicking through that right heel, lifting it up towards the ceiling. Good, and then bend the knee into the chest and release the right leg down. Inhale, reach your arms all the way overhead and then exhale, step your feet onto your mat. All right, when you're ready, we're gonna hug the knees into the chest and then either rock a little bit side to side until you're ready to roll over onto your side and press yourself up to tabletop position. If you want to, Rock and roll up and down the spine. You'll start to work up some momentum, rocking forward and back until you come to a seated position. Cross your ankles, carefully roll over onto your hands and knees. Good, and we're gonna come into a tabletop position here. So go ahead and move things out of your way. Stack your knees right underneath your hips, your hands right underneath your shoulders. And we're gonna start to move through cat-cow. So on your inhale, drop the belly, arch the back, look up. On your exhale, round your spine and curl in. Good, a few rounds of breath here. Inhale, finding that arch in the spine. Exhale, press the ground away, round through the spine, tuck your tail, draw your chin in. Two more, inhale, starting to sink your breath with your movement. Exhale, round and curl in. And maybe even as you move, you feel a little bit of residual sensation in the belly after that work we did before, right? Just starting to wake up those muscles, getting them ready for more complex poses later on. Not too complex, don't worry. Inhale, come back to neutral. Exhale, tuck your toes. Now, if you can, I just want you to hover your knees. So just let them barely hover off the mat. Yeah, and it should be a good amount of work here. You're pressing the ground away. You're lifting through the belly. Your gaze is at the top of your mat, so the back of your neck spine stays nice and long. Take one more breath here, just hovering those knees. Good, and then slowly lift your hips and come right into downward facing dog. Now you can bend your knees, you can pedal your feet. Go ahead and take some time just to feel it out in your downward facing dog. See what feels good, make some adjustments. Right? For a lot of us, especially if we're tighter in the body, especially those hamstrings, you might bend the knees and then maybe even walk the feet a little bit wider apart. So you have a wide stance and your knees are bent. Good, you can do the same thing with the hands by just spinning the hands slightly away from one another so that your pointer fingers are angling to the corners of your mat. And then you can also walk your hands a little bit wider. Good, when you're ready, start to think about lifting your sitting bones up and back and then maybe starting to melt your heels down a little bit more. 
Full breath, inhale. And exhale. Good. From here, we're going to start to walk the feet forward to the top of the mat and come into a forward fold. Now, for most of us, we want to bend the knees the whole way there. You're going to keep a little bend in those knees. When you get there, go ahead and let the belly drape over the thighs. Let the head relax fully. You can grab opposite elbows. You can even let the body sway a little bit. If there's any discomfort in the lower back, then you might consider coming up to 90 degrees so you have a flat spine. Good. All right, let's take one full breath together. Inhale and exhale. If you're in your forward fold, you're gonna to start to rise all the way up to stand. So take your time, let your tailbone anchor down and then start to reach up through your arms, lengthen your pinky fingers to the sky and then on your next exhale, bring your hands right in front of your chest. All right, we'll continue to move with the breath today. Inhale, sweep your arms all the way overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, slide your hands up to your shins and reach the crown of your head forward. And as you reach, try to lift the belly and draw the shoulders out of the ears. On your exhale, fold forward and release the breath out. Inhale, rise all the way to stand. Reach your arms overhead, maybe even look up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart center. We're gonna do this one more time together. So inhale here, reach your arms all the way overhead. Exhale to fold forward over your legs. Relax the head fully. Inhale, hands to shins. Reach the crown of the head forward. And exhale, just fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand. Reach your arms overhead. And exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. All right, this time we're going to make our way into a lunge. So inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, come on up halfway, hands to shins, reach the crown of your head forward. On your exhale, you're going to slide your left toes back all the way to the back of your mat. Go ahead and lower your knee down. If it's uncomfortable to put your knee down on the ground and you have a yoga mat, you can always double over the side of the mat so you have a little extra padding or you can put a towel or a pillow or something underneath that knee. All right. So we're going to let the hips come forward here for a couple of breaths. And as you let the hips come forward, you should start to feel a stretch in the front of that left hip, okay? If there's some discomfort, then you can adjust until it feels a little bit more sustainable here. All right, let's take another breath, inhale. Stay for the exhale. When you're ready, you're gonna to start to walk your hands further back. You're gonna to start to straighten your front leg and flex your foot. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about whether that front leg gets straight or not. It may not get all the way straight. There may be a little bend in it and that's okay, okay? You can also adjust the foot by scooting it forward more. You should start to feel a stretch through that hamstring, okay? And as you stretch through the hamstring, I want you to continue to pull the chest forward and lengthen through that spine. If you have more space here, you can pull that right pinky toe back towards you, just like we did in that hamstring stretch earlier. Good. Inhale here. Exhale here. We're gonna slowly bend into that front knee, find the lunge, walk your hands forward, tuck your back toes under, lift your back knee off the ground, and then step forward and come into your forward fold. On your inhale, come on up halfway. And on your exhale, fold. We're going to switch sides. Slide your right toes back. Go ahead and drop your knee down. Good. Release the top of that back foot. Let the hips come forward. So now we're stretching the front of that right hip. Pad the knee if you'd like. And just notice the sensation in the front of that right hip. See if you can bring all of your attention to the sensation in the body. Really aware of the stretch sensation in the front of the right hip. You might even be able to feel the pressure on the back knee or the back foot. You might even be able to feel the pressure on the hands or how they come down in contact with the mat. Really tuning in to the sensation in the body. Let's take a full breath here, inhale. Now on the exhale, you're gonna to start to pull your hips back, walk your hands to the back of your mat and straighten your front leg. And again, if you're tighter in the hamstrings, they may not get all the way straight. You can also adjust by maybe scooting that foot forward a little bit. You want to try to keep your spine as long as possible. 
Right, so it's avoiding that rounding. Let your hips pull back as your chest pulls forward. Let's take a couple more breaths here. If you can, you wanna keep those toes flexed and pulling back towards you. Notice your breathing. So all that work that we did in the beginning of working the lower belly is really for supporting the lower back. It seems like core work <laughs> turns out we have these deep abdominal muscles that really need to be active and engaged as they start to move. So I often like to start practicing with just a little bit of core work just to activate those muscles so my lower back can stay happy and supported throughout the whole practice. Right. One more breath here, inhale. When you're ready on your exhale, start to bend into that front knee. You're gonna tuck the back toes under and lift your back knee off the ground and then step forward and come back into that forward fold. On your inhale, lengthen the spine. On your exhale, fold and release the breath. Next inhale, come all the way up to stand, reach your arms overhead and exhale, bring your hands to your heart center. All right, we're gonna play with some balance here. So when you're ready, you're gonna send your hips down and back into a chair pose. So pull your hips back and then maybe reach your arms overhead. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Pull the shins back behind those toes and then just peek down and see if you can see your toes. You might even play with lifting the toes off the ground. Spread the toes a little bit wider and then softly set those toes back down. Good, on your inhale, see if you can reach up through your arms. On your exhale, I want you to sweep your hands back and let your chest come down just to hover over your thighs. Good, and then on your inhale, we're gonna take those arms up and lift your chest. On our exhale, we're gonna sweep the hands back and lower the chest down to hover. Nice, let's do two more. Inhale, arms overhead, lift the chest. Exhale, sweep your hands back, lean your chest forward with the breath. Inhale, reach your arms up, lift your chest. Exhale, sweep your hands back, lean forward. This time you're gonna press into your feet and rise all the way to stand. Reach your arms overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. All right, inhale, take your arms wide and high, look up. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, hands to shins, reach the crown of the head forward. This time exhale, plant your palms and step into downward facing dog. Now you can stay in downward facing dog. You can always lower the knees down to the ground and take child's pose. For those of you who practice more Ashtanga or Vinyasa styles, maybe even power yoga, you're welcome to take a Vinyasa by sliding forward into plank. Consider lowering the knees down for support for the first round. Bend your elbows straight back and lower through Chaturanga all the way to the mat. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, lower your chest down, press to tabletop, and then tuck your toes. Lift your hips, downward facing dog. All right, big inhale through your nose. Open your mouth and let out a sigh. Uh, try that once more, big inhale through the nose. Let all the tension go, open the mouth, release the breath out of the mouth, sigh it out. Good, all right, inhale, we're gonna float the right leg up and back. And then exhale, step the right foot in between the hands. Now this time we're gonna keep our hands framing our front foot. So we've got one hand on the outer ankle, one hand just inside the foot. On the inhale, we're gonna pull the shoulders out of the ears and reach the heart forward. On the exhale, we're gonna to start to lift the hips up and back and begin to straighten the legs. On the next inhale, we're gonna bend into that front knee, reach the heart forward. And then exhale, lift the hips and start to straighten the front legs. Now, it doesn't matter if the legs get straight. Inhale, bend into the front knee, pull the heart forward. Exhale, lift your hips, and begin to stretch the back of that leg. Inhale, bend into the front knee. Exhale, start to straighten the front leg. And so we're never really going for an end shape. Inhale, bend into the front knee. We're really going for the efforts and the actions within the pose. We wanna feel the stretch sensation. We wanna feel the muscular engagement. The next time that you bend into the front knee, pause. We're gonna to start to firm that back leg a little bit more. 
we're, when you're ready, you're gonna walk your hands to your hips and now we're just gonna hover our chest, kind of like we did in that chair pose. We're just hovering the chest. Now you'll start to feel some decent work in the legs. I want you to press down into the front heel and see if you can hug your right hip into the midline. So try not to let that right hip swing over to the right. Take an inhale. On your exhale, release your hands down and step back, downward facing dog. You can move through a vinyasa if you'd like. You can drop the knees to child's pose. Or just stay where you are in downward facing dog. Take a breath. Good, and then we'll move into our second side. Inhale, float your left leg up and back. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Find that lunge, and then frame your hands on either side of your front foot. And just check, you might even peek at your back foot, and just make sure that you're not walking on a tightrope here with your feet, that you've got a little bit of space between your feet. Good. And then on your inhale, I want you to pull your heart through your arms. On your exhale, start to lift your hips. And again, it doesn't matter if they get all the way straight. You're going until you feel a little stretch in that hamstring. Next inhale, bend into the front knee. Next exhale, lift your hips. Good. A few more with the breath. Inhale, drop into that lunge. Pull the heart forward. Draw the shoulders down the back. Exhale, lift your hips. Good. Two more. Inhale, bend the front knee. Find that lunge. Exhale, lift the hips. Last one. Inhale, bend into the front knee. Exhale, lift your hips. All right, this next time that you bend into the front knee, you're gonna pause. We're gonna start to activate the legs a little bit more. You can play with coming up onto just a couple of fingertips, getting ready for that work in the legs. And then when you're ready, both hands will come to the hips. You're gonna hover your chest. Here we go, good. You're bending deep into the front knee. I want you to try to hug your front hip into the midline so that your front knee and your front hip are in the same line. Good, press down into that front heel Keep working that back leg so it's nice and straight. We'll take one more breath here, inhale. And then on your exhale, release your hands down. Step back, downward facing dog. Again, you have the option to lower your knees for child's pose. You have the option to shift forward into your plank and maybe lower through chaturanga into cobra or upward facing dog. We'll meet in downward facing dog. All right, we're gonna go back to that first side here. So on your inhale, float your right leg up and back. On your exhale, step your right foot forward. Now, most of us are gonna keep the hands on the ground. If you're feeling adventurous today, you can walk your hands up to your hips and hover your chest, okay? Otherwise, with the hands on the ground, I want you to walk your hands a little bit further out. And then you're gonna to start to lean onto that front leg and lift your back leg up to about hip height. So we'll call this supported warrior three. If you do have yoga props, here's where a block can come in handy to lift the chest. For those of you who decided hands on hips was the way to go, you're tipping forward without the support of the hands and coming into warrior three. So as best as you can, you wanna to try to find that T-shape in the body. The shoulders are in the same line as the hips. That lifted leg is in the same line as the hips. Good, we're gonna take one more breath here, inhale. And then on the exhale, we're gonna come out the same way we got in. So bend the front knee, step back, find that lunge, release your hands to the ground and step back, downward facing dog. Stay in down dog, maybe come forward into plank pose and lower through your vinyasa. Maybe lower the knees and take a brief child's pose. All right, from down dog, second side. Left leg will lift, left foot will step forward. Lots of options from here. Hands can stay on the ground. Option one is to walk those hands forward and then lift the back leg up to hip height. Option two, hands to hips, you'll hover your chest and then you'll start to tip forward and find that warrior three shape without the support of the hands. Notice your breathing here. Notice if you start to hold tension in your body. See if you can release through the parts of the body that don't need to be tense, that don't need to be engaged or working, right? 
So common culprits are the jaw, the eyes, sometimes even the traps, lifting the shoulders into the ears. Try to soften those shoulders out of the ears. Try to soften your gaze. We'll take one more breath here. And then we'll come out the same way we got in. Bend the front knee. Slowly step back into that lunge. Good. Release your hands to the ground and step back. Downward facing dog. Option to lower knees to child's pose. Option to come forward to plank and flow. Option to stay right where you are in down dog. Wherever you decide to go, take the breath with you. Inhale. And exhale. All right, from here, inhale, float that right leg up and back. Exhale, step the right foot forward. We're in that lunge. This time, we're gonna raise the arms overhead and come all the way up to standing. So you're in a high lunge. Now, on the inhale, we're gonna reach the arms overhead. On the exhale, we're gonna sweep our hands back and lean the chest forward. And then inhale, we're gonna take those arms all the way overhead, look forward, and exhale, sweep the hands back. Really nice, so testing out that balance. One more like that, inhale, reach up. Exhale, sweep your hands back. Good, inhale, reach your arms up. And this time, exhale, open into warrior two. Separate your arms wide, bend into the front knee. Good, so you're allowed to let your back hip turn forward a little bit. Okay, really want you to focus on squaring the shoulders to the side of the room. Bend deep into that front thigh. Good. And then on the next inhale, we're going to straighten the front leg and reach both arms overhead. On the exhale, we're going to bend into the front knee and come back to warrior two. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend the front knee, warrior two. One more time. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend the front knee, warrior two. Good, this time we're gonna straighten the front leg, reach both arms overhead. Now take your time here. Let's bring the hands through heart center first. Carefully spin those front toes to face the side of the room. So all 10 toes now will face the side of the room. Now all you're gonna do is turn those back toes at an angle, maybe 45 degrees at an angle, and then bend into that knee and find skandasana. Now if you want, you can take the hands to the ground. Some people like to spin that right foot onto the heel so that you can turn the toes up. Okay, if it feels like too much, you can keep the elbows on the thigh. Okay, but you're trying to get into that right inner thigh by bending the left knee and straightening the right. Good. Take one more breath here, inhale. And then on the exhale, you're gonna switch sides. Now bend that right knee. You might wanna angle those right toes a little bit out to the corner of the mat. You can also consider spinning up on the heel of that left foot, okay? You can keep it neutral or you can spin up onto the heel, your choice. The main thing that as we bend into that right knee now, I want you to check and see that the toes and the knee are pointing in the same direction. So if you're bending the right knee, make sure that the right knee isn't buckling in or bowing out. The knee and the toes are facing the same direction. Good, let's come back to center. And then one more time, bend into that left knee. Find Skandasana. If you want more challenge, you can hover your hands. Yep, there it is. Two more breaths. Good, slowly lift the hips, straighten both legs. And then on the inhale, we're gonna reach the heart forward. On the exhale, we're just going to fold. Let the head be heavy. One more breath, inhale. Stay for the exhale. All right, on the next inhale, we're gonna lift the chest, come on up halfway. Put a little bend in the knees. Now we're gonna swivel the heels in, the toes out, and come up into horse pose. So we're gonna lift the chest, squat down. The toes and the knees are pointing in the same direction. All right, we're gonna work the arms a little bit here. So on your inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. On your exhale, pull your hands through heart center and sink the hips low. A few more like that. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, pull hands through heart center, sink low. Good, three more with the breath. Inhale, exhale, hands through heart center. Notice the sensation in the body. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands through heart center. 
Good, one more, just like that. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. Exhale, pull your hands through heart center. And then release your hands to your hips and straighten your front leg. Straighten your legs. <laughs> Turn your toes to face forward. Good, and then step or hop the feet together. All right, we're gonna come back to the top of the mat. Find just a standing mountain pose, Tadasana, arms by the sides. On your inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. And on your exhale, fold forward over your legs. On your inhale, hands to shins, reach the crown of your head forward. Exhale, plant your palms, step back, downward facing dog. Option to flow, plank through chaturanga if you'd like. Staying in down dog if you'd like. Moving with your breath. Good. All right, we have a second side. On the inhale, we're gonna float that left leg up. Exhale, step the left foot forward. Find your footing here, and then rise all the way up into a high lunge. Inhale to reach up through those arms. Exhale to sweep the hands back and lean the chest forward. Good. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, sweep your hands back and lean forward. Use your breath here. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, sweep your hands back and lean forward. This time, inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, open into warrior two. So again, the arms are wide. You're bending deep into the front thigh. Sometimes we hear teachers say square the hips, but for a lot of us, that's a lot of opening in the hips, maybe even too much. So we're gonna let that back hip spin forward just a little bit. And then we're gonna focus instead on rotating the shoulders to face the side of the room. Right, so for those of you in medicine, remember that rotation in the upper back is a little bit greater than that rotation in the lower back. So we wanna utilize that rotation in the thoracic spine to square the shoulders off to the side of the room. All right, let's move with the breath. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend into the front knee. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend into the front knee, warrior two. Really nice, inhale, arms reach, front leg goes straight. Try not to lock it out, bend the front knee, warrior two. This time, inhale, straighten the front leg, reach the arms overhead, and just pause, bring the hands through the heart center. We're gonna spin those front toes to face the side of the room, facing the different side now, and then spin the back toes just a little bit away from you. So the back toes will be angled just a tiny bit. Start to bend into the front knee, into the back knee, excuse me, and then see if you can start to straighten that front leg. Option to take the hands to the ground, pull the heart forward, take a couple of breaths here. Inhale and exhale, good. And then if you want, you can start to move side to side, maybe pausing for a few breaths on either side. If you wanna make it more dynamic than the, the first time here, you're just gonna to start to switch from side to side. Good, let's take about two more breaths here. Inhale and exhale. Good, inhale, slow and steady, smooth it out and exhale. We'll come back to that first side. Stay for a breath. Good, and then start to straighten both legs. Now this time on the inhale, we're gonna spin the heels in, toes out right away, and come back to that horse pose. So again, your toes and knees are facing the same direction. On your inhale, take your arms all the way overhead. On your exhale, bring your hands through heart center. Good, four more. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands through, heart center, sink low. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, bend through the knees, hands to heart center. Two more, inhale, arms reach. Exhale, pull, hands through, heart center. Last one, inhale, reach the arms all the way overhead. Exhale, bring hands through, heart center. Good, hands to hips, straighten both legs. Carefully turn those toes to face neutral, and then step or hop the feet together. Nice, all right. So before we switch sides all the way, we're gonna to come to a couple of standing poses here. So let's find Tadasana. There we go, arms by the sides. We're gonna stand on that left foot to start and draw the right knee into the chest. Go ahead and open that knee out to the side and bring the sole of, of the foot maybe to the inner thigh, maybe to the calf, or maybe the toes stay on the ground. 
So it's up to you. You can have more stability or less stability. Hands to heart center. Try to soften your shoulders. Now pay attention to how much you're sinking over into that standing hip. We wanna to try to hug that standing hip into the midline so that whoop, the pelvis stays level. <laughs> Good, and it's okay if you fall. It might get a little wiggly here. So see if you can study your gaze and then bring your hands to heart center, hug that standing hip in, and then find a few breaths, right? And as you study here, just notice if the breath is moving all the way down to the base of the diaphragm. See if you can really fill the whole chest, the whole thorax with the breath. So instead of having these shallow breaths, nice and deep breaths. Good, one more, inhale. And exhale. Good, all right, we're gonna slowly release that foot and switch sides, stand on the right foot, draw the left knee in. Open the knee out to the side and bring the sole of the foot either to the inner thigh, the calf, or maybe the toes stay on the ground. Hands at heart center. Couple of breaths here. See if you can soften the shoulders away from the ears. Press into that standing foot and notice how when you actively press the foot down into the ground, you get a little bit taller. Feel the crown of the head lengthen up. Good, and then notice again the breath. The standing hip will hug the midline. See if you can find your one point of gaze. So one single point of gaze will help you find that balance. Try not to move the eyes around too much. Let's take two more breaths here. Really nice. Slowly release the foot. All right, you can shake it out if you need to. We're gonna come back to the top of the mat. So when you're ready, find your standing mountain pose. Inhale, reach your arms all the way overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, lengthen the crown of the head forward. Exhale, plant your palms, step your feet back. Downward facing dog. If you'd like, you can move through plank and lower through vinyasa. If you'd like, you can also drop the knees and take child's pose. Several breaths. A couple of quick notes. If you're in child's pose and your knees, your ankles, or your hips feel a little bit tight or uncomfortable, then you can always take a different pose. So maybe instead you come down to your elbows and let your head rest down and tuck your toes under so it's a little bit less pressure on your knees and your ankles and your hips. You can also just come onto your back or take a seated position. So feel free to find another rest pose if child's pose doesn't feel great. Full breath, inhale and exhale. All right, when you're ready, we're gonna climb up onto hands and knees and then walk your knees back just a little bit behind you. We're gonna start to lower to our belly. So first shift forward and then bend your elbows straight back. Control that descent if you can, slowly coming onto the belly. We're gonna do just a few rounds of back bends before we call it a day. So let's take the hands under the shoulders. Let's hug the elbows into the midline. And then on the next inhale, just peel the chest off the ground, baby cobra. Keep hugging your elbows into the midline, lifting the chest. Now, if you want, you can start to hover your hands off the ground. And you should notice some uh, engagement in the upper back as you're hugging the elbows in and lifting the hands. Now, the back of the neck can still be long, so you're not cranking your gaze to the sky. The gaze can be down. The chin can pull in. Take one more breath here and then lower slowly. Now you can release the head to one side, relax the arms back by the hips, or maybe even stack the hands and let the forehead rest down. All right, we're gonna move into our second back bend here. So you can stay with this first variation of baby cobra, or you can start to move into locust pose, shalabhasana. You can take the hands back by the hips, and then inhale, float the hands up off the ground, start to lift the chest. And if it feels okay in your lower back, you might also add the legs. So kind of that Superman shape. The chest is lifting, the legs are lifting, and the arms are lifting. And again, you're making sure that there's no discomfort in the lower back. If there is, then you might just try lifting either the legs or the chest instead of both. 
See if you can lengthen the tailbone away from the lower back. Take an inhale. And then on the exhale, start to lower down. Maybe turn your head to the other side. Or stack your hands and let your forehead come down. Nice. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. All right. Last round together. So, again, you can stick with this cobra shape. If you want to take a bigger cobra, you can think about straightening the arms a little bit more. Okay. Otherwise, arms will reach back. You're going to lift the arms and float the chest up, maybe adding the legs coming back to Shalabhasana. Good. All right. See if you can lift the um, inner thighs towards the sky and lengthen the tailbone away from the lower back. So there's almost a tiny bit of internal rotation of those legs, inner thighs rolling up and back. Reach the fingertips to the wall behind you. Lengthen the back of the neck, inhale. Good, exhale, slowly, slowly lower down. Feel free to turn your head to one side or stack your palms. Let your forehead rest down. All right, when you're ready, you're gonna slowly roll over onto your back. So you can just take one arm overhead, flip around, come onto your back. We won't be getting back up after this, so you know you've made it this far. Really nice work. All right, we're gonna take the arms by the sides and come into a bridge pose. So it's really important that your gaze stay in one position, you're gonna keep looking straight up at the sky. You don't wanna turn your head around here. You wanna keep your neck as neutral as possible. So you're looking straight up at the sky. All you're gonna do is press into your feet and lift your hips and come into a bridge pose. Now, sometimes it's nice to walk the shoulder blades down the back to get a little bit more space in that back bend. You're pressing into all four corners of the feet, lifting those hips. Good, now as you press into the feet, just imagine that you could Push your feet forward. If you're on a slippery surface, don't do it too hard, but imagine that you're mo moving your feet away from you and you'll notice how you kind of slide more to the tops of your shoulders. And then do the opposite. Imagine you could pull the feet back towards the shoulders. And you might notice that your hips lift a little bit higher and you slide down a little lower on your shoulders. You wanna try to do a little bit of both here so that you're lifting your hips, you're pulling your heels back and engaging those hamstrings but you're also getting more to the tops of your shoulders. Take an inhale. On your exhale, lift your toes and roll down one vertebra at a time. Good. Let's open the arms wide. Walk the feet back to that mat's distance apart shape so your feet are wider. And then just let the knees tick tock side to side. Good. Rotating through the lower back. A little release there. Nice. Now the next time that the knees come over to the right, I want you to let them stay there. You can keep the legs staggered for the spinal twist. If you want a little bit deeper twist, then you're going to bring the knees up to center, scoot your hips a little bit to the left, maybe an inch or two to the left, and then stack your knees and let your knees come all the way over to the right. So hips scoot to the left side of the mat, and then the knees drop over to the right. And then you're gonna rotate through the upper back, Take a full inhale, full exhale. Let's see if you can allow your breath to slow down a little bit. See if you can soften your eyelids. Good. Let's take one more breath, inhale. And then exhale, bring the knees up to center. You can go back to tick-tocking the knees side to side. Good. And then when you're ready, you can drop the knees over to the left. Good. And sometimes it's nice to just scoot those hips over to the right before you drop the knees to the left so that you can feel a little bit more rotation throughout the whole spine, a little bit deeper twist. Legs are dropping to the left. The belly and the chest are rolling away from those legs. And we're just starting to slow down the breathing. See if you can relax your jaw. Relax the tongue from the roof of your mouth. Take an inhale. Stay for the exhale. Good, one more big breath, inhale. 
And then on your exhale, go ahead and bring your knees up to center. Scoot your hips to the center of the mat. And then hug your knees into your chest. And you can rock a little bit side to side. I want to give you some time to close your practice however you feel is right. So some of you might enjoy happy baby, stretching a little bit more through the inner thighs. Some of you might enjoy a figure four shape or cow face pose we call gomukasana, crossing the knees and hugging the knees in towards you for those outer hip stretches. Right? And there might be something else. Maybe you want to go back to the hamstring stretch. Maybe you want to just release the legs and come right into your shavasana, your final rest pose. It's up to you. The important thing is that you feel really comfortable. Your body feels like it's ready to relax, ready to let go. Okay, you've done all this work of kind of priming the body. All right, so we move the body, we stretch, we strengthen, we align the body so that we can hopefully find a little bit more stillness. Right, stillness of the mind, focusing the mind. Right. And so also we're a little bit more comfortable living in our body, whatever we may want to do. Right. Working out any tension, balancing the joints. So that whatever we may want to do, the body is ready for it. It's a sustainable practice here. All right, when you're ready, we're gonna release the legs down to the ground and find final rest. So if you want, legs can be wide, arms can relax by the sides. If for some reason laying flat on your back is not comfortable, please feel free to adjust. You can always bend the knees and tent the knees together. You can also always roll onto your side and rest here. Really nice option, especially for those of you who may uh, be pregnant or have low back issues. And the final option would be just to come up to a comfortable seated position and maybe sit up on a block or a few textbooks or whatever you have nearby. So take some time to get really comfortable. We'll close with a really brief meditation together. So once you get comfortable, let the shoulders get heavy. Relax your eyes. If you're in a seated position, I'll invite you just to lean back slightly. We tend to pitch forward a little bit. Lean the head back slightly. And then see if you can soften the jaw one more time. Separate the teeth. Part your lips. Let your tongue drop from the roof of your mouth. See if you can just notice the sensation in the body. Get really curious about it. Notice the sensation of the body resting on the ground. Notice the parts of the body that are in contact with the ground beneath you. And see if you can notice the sensation of the clothing on the skin. Maybe you can also notice the sensation of the air on the skin. Maybe you can feel the temperature of that air. It's really tuning in. You might also be able to feel the subtle movements in the body, the lift and lower of the belly and the chest. You might be able to feel the air passing through the nostrils, each inhale and each exhale. Really allowing yourself to be fully present with all the sensation in the body. And take a few more breaths here. Just noticing sensation, the pressure of the body on the ground, all the points of contact between the body and the ground, the clothing on the skin, the air on the skin, the subtle movements, belly lifting, chest lifting, Feeling the breath move through you. And allowing the rest of the body to relax here. Good. 
For those of you who have more time today, you're welcome to stay where you are. You're welcome to continue your rest. For those of you who are ready to move on, go ahead and roll over to your side. Take your time. Stretch your arms overhead. Good. Yeah, bend your feet. Bend your knees. Step your feet to your mat. Roll over to your side and then press yourself to a comfortable seated position. We'll close together here. So once you come to a comfortable seated position, consider again sitting up on something so that your hip flexors can stay relaxed. We did a lot of work to open those up today. So sit up on something. And then when you're ready, inhale, stretch your arms all the way overhead. Reach up, feel that length. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart center. We'll take one more moment just to pause and notice the effect of a little bit of movement, of breath work, of mindfulness. Notice the effect it has. Maybe even making an intention to take some part of this with you. So maybe you decide to just focus on a deeper breath today or in relaxing your shoulders out of your ears today. Right? Some little thing that you can take with you. We'll take a full breath here. Inhale, fill all the way to the top. And open your mouth. Exhale, release your breath out. Right? You can let your head drop down for just a moment. Taking a moment to appreciate yourself for showing up. And then thank you all so much for joining us this morning. It was a true pleasure to guide you. I'm so humbled to be able to share this practice with you, especially during this time. Um, thank you to Osmosis for giving us this space to create wellness and health resources for those who need it. And um, for those of you who are still tuning in, just a, quick, a couple of quick announcements. Um, last week, Osmosis, the Osmosis team dropped a new hit single. It's called Flatten the Curve, Raise the Line. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely worth checking out and sharing. You can find it at osmosis.org slash COVID-19. And there's also a pledge there. So for those of you who are doing your part, we appreciate you. We would love to have you sign our pledge, uh, just showing that you are staying at home, you're doing your part, you're helping again to flatten the curve and raise the line. And it seems like um, with all of us coming together, we have a real chance at making change here. So thank you again for showing up. Thank you for doing your part. Thank you to the healthcare workers for all of your help and support. And hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you.